So here's Trumpet of the Swan. We're on chapter nine, which is on page 91, if y'all want to follow along. As the cob flew towards Billings on his powerful white wings, all sorts of troublesome thoughts whirled in his head. The cob had never gone looking for a trumpet before. He had no money to pay for a trumpet. He feared he might arrive after the shops had closed for the day. He realized that the whole continent of North America, of the North, in the whole continent of North America, he was undoubtedly the only trumpeteer swan. He was on his way to a city to get a trumpet. This is a queer adventure, he said to himself, yet it is a noble quest. I will do anything to help my son Lewis, even if I run into real trouble. Toward the end of the afternoon, the cob looked ahead and in the distance saw the churches and factories and shops and homes of Billings. He decided, to act quickly and boldly. He circled the city once, looking for a music store. Suddenly, he spied one. It had a very big wide window, solid glass. The cob flew lower and circled so he could get a better look. He gazed into the store. He saw a drum painted gold. He saw a fancy guitar with an electric cord. He saw a small piano. He saw banjos, horns, violin, mandolins, Symbols, saxophones, marimba phones, cellos, and many, many other instruments. Then he saw what he wanted. He saw a brass trumpet hanging by a red cord. Now is my time to act, he said to himself. Now is my moment for risking everything on one bold move however shocking it may be to my sensibilities, however offensive it may be to the laws that govern the lives of men. Here I go, may luck go with me. With that, the old cob set his wings for a dive. He aimed straight at the big window. He held his neck straight and stiff waiting for the crash. He dove swiftly and hit the window going full speed. The glass broke, the noise was terrific. The whole store shook. Musical instruments fell to the floor. Glass flew everywhere. A sales girl fainted. The cob felt a twing of pain as a jagged piece of broken glass cut into his shoulder, but he grabbed the trumpet in his beak, turned sharply in the air, flew back through the hole in the window and began climbing fast over the roofs of the billings. A few drops of blood fell to the ground below. His shoulder hurt, but he had succeeded in getting what he came for. Held firmly in his bill, its red cord dangling was a beautiful brass trumpet. You can imagine the noise in the music store when the cob crashed through the window at the moment the glass broke, one of the clerks was showing a brass drum to a customer, and the clerk was so startled at seeing a big white bird come flying through the window, he hit the drum, uh, hit the, he hit the drum a tremendous wallop. Boom! Went the drum, crash! With the splinter of the flying glass, when the sales girl fainted, she fell against the keys of the piano. Rung! Rung! wrong with the piano. The owner of the store grabbed his shotgun, which went off by mistake, blasting a hole in the ceiling and sending down a shower of plaster. Everything was flying around and falling and making noise. Bomb went the drum, pluck went the banjo, wrong, wrong, wrong with the piano, Ump went the bull fiddle, help scream the clerk. Wrong, wrong, wrong with the piano. The owner of the store grabbed a shotgun. Oh, now we're here. Wrong, wrong, wrong with the piano. Ump with the bull fiddle. Help, screamed a clerk. We've been robbed. Make way, shouted the owner. He ran for the door, stepped outside and fired another shot. Bang! at the disappearing bird. His shot was too late. The cob was safe in the sky beyond the range of gunfire. He was headed home toward the southwest, high above the roofs and spires of Billings in his beak 
was the trumpet. In his heart was the pain of having committed a crime. I've robbed a store, he said to himself. I've become a thief. What a miserable fate for a bird of my excellent character and high ideals. Why did I do this? What led me to commit this awful crime? My past life had been blameless. A model of good behavior and correct conduct? Am I by nature law abiding? Why, oh why did I do this? Then the answer came to him as he flew steadily on through the evening sky. I did it to help my son. I did it for the love I have for my son, Lewis. Back in Billings, the news spread rapidly. This was the first time a swan had broke into a music store and made off with a trumpet. And here he is crashing in and getting the trumpet. Here's the picture. A lot of people refused to believe it had happened. The editor of the newspaper sent a reporter to the store to look around. The reporter interviewed the owner and wrote an article about the event for the paper. The article was headed, Large bird breaks into music store. White swan crashes through the window and makes off with a valuable trumpet. Everybody in Billings bought a copy of the paper and read all about the extraordinary event. It was talked about all over town. Some people believed it. Others said it never happened. They said the owner had just invented it to get some publicity for his store. But the clerks in the store agreed that it really had happened. They pointed to the drops of blood on the floor. The police came to look over the damage, which was estimated at $900. The police promised they would try to find the thief and arrest him, but the police were sorry to hear that the thief was a bird. Birds are a special problem, they said. Birds are hard to deal with. Back at the Red Rocks Lake, Lewis's mother waited anxiously for her husband to return. When he showed up in the night sky, she saw that he had a trumpet with him. It was slung around his neck by a cord. Well, she said, as uh, he glided to a stop in the water. I see you made it. I did, my dear, said the cob. I traveled fast and far, sacrificed my honor, and I have returned. Where's Lewis? I want to give him his trumpet right away. He's over there sitting on a muskrat house, dreaming about the empty-headed young female he was so crazy about. The cob swam over to his son and made a pre presentation speech. Lewis, he said, I've been on a journey to the the haunts of men. I have visited a great city teeming with life and commerce. Whilst there, I picked up a gift for you, which I now bestow upon you with my love and my blessing. Here, Lewis, is a trumpet. It will be your voice, a substitute for the voice God failed to give you. Learn to blow it, Lewis, and life will be smoother and richer and gayer for you. With the help of this horn, you will be able at last to say to haunt like every other swan. The sound of music will be in our ears and you will be able to attract the attention of desirable young females. Master this trumpet and you will be able to play love songs for them, filling them with adore and surprise and longing. I hope it will bring you happiness, Lewis, and a new and better life. I procured it at some personal sacrifice to myself and my pride, but we won't go into that now. The long and short of it is I had no money. I took the trumpet without paying for it. This was deplorable, but the important thing is that you learn to play the instrument. So saying, the cob removed the trumpet from around his neck and hung it on Lewis alongside the slate and the white uh, chalk pencil. Wear it in good health, he said. Blow it in happiness. Make the woods and the hills and the marshes echo with the sound of your youthful desire. Lewis wanted to thank his father, but he was unable to say a word, and he knew it would be no good to write thank you on the slate because his father wouldn't be able to read, never having had an education. So Lewis bobbled his head and waggled his tail and fluttered his wings. The cob knew by these signs he had found favor in the sight of his son, and that the gift of the trumpet was acceptable. 
So that was the end of the ninth chapter of the Trumpet of the Swan. I hope you liked it.